Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to welcome all of us to join our Sunday service. Aren't we glad that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, the one who made the universe and everything that is in it? At one time, we were not His children. We were far from Him, living in sin and without hope. But He has adopted us through our faith in Jesus. An adopted son is as good as a biological son. An adopted son is entitled to all that the father has. We are now heirs or co-heirs with Jesus Christ. All that the father has is ours. But we should not forget that all that we have belongs to our father too. We should be willing to submit every aspect of our lives to our Lord. I will lead us to say the opening prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you, ever so grateful for your great love and wonderful grace. We were not worthy because of our sins, but you have saved us because of your mercy and purpose. Lord, we know that you want us to live in holiness and righteousness. We will study your word and be steadfast in obeying your commandments. We will not walk in the ways of sinners, but walk in the light of your truth. Your word tells us that the word of God is living and active. Let your word constantly act in our hearts and in our minds to transform us. May the image of Christ Jesus be fully formed in us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will ask Dr. Lauren to lead us to sing two songs to worship our Lord. We must not forget that we are created to worship our God. Make sure that when we sing, we sing it with all our heart. God will only accept singing and worship that is true and sincere. He 
We have Holy Communion on the first and third week of every month. Most Bian churches hold Holy Communion once a month. Christ asks us to do it as often as we can. I think once a month is not regular enough, so we will have it twice a month, the first and third week of the month. Don't make the Holy Communion a ritual. Let it be a time where we can reflect on the great love and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus for us. Your spouse will never get tired of hearing I love you from you. Likewise, God will not get tired of hearing our prayers of gratitude and adoration. Dr. Loren will lead us to sing a song to adore the Lord before we eat the bread and drink the cup. Se 
Let's pray before we eat the bread and drink the cup. Lord, thank you for Jesus. He is our high priest, the firstborn of creation, the firstborn from the dead. And he is also the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He was without sin, but made sin. Thank you that all our burdens of sin have been lifted at Calvary. Thank you for forgiving our sins and giving us the garments of righteousness. Thank you that we are not no longer under wrath but under grace. How blessed that we are to have the gift of salvation. We will always appreciate and treasure this grace by living a holy life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Where Dr. Paul An to speak to us, the title of his message is The Favor of God. The Favor of God. It is something very exciting and very real in, in our Christian walk when you experience the favor of God. What, what is the favor of God? The favor of God, I believe, is God's grace, God's ability put inside us to cause us to experience blessing that is not natural, open doors, provision, promotion. And uh, it's amazing, like, uh, it's, it's like a master key that will open doors to take you to places, to divinely connect you with people, and things that will normally happen will happen. So it's something that is very uh, unusual and, and very exciting, all right? Now, favor of God is something you cannot see. It's like wind. We do not know when it comes and when it goes, but we know the effects of wind. When the wind is there, we know the leaves of the tree shakes. We know the, the effects of the wind. Same with favor. When God's favor is upon our, your life, you'll begin to manifest in your daily life, your relationship, the places you go, your workplace, your boss, and, and the list goes on. Right, uh, Pastor Jeff mentioned that we, we, we went to America. Uh, this may, it, it looks so impossible in the natural, you know, it's total lockdown, uh, not just in Malaysia, but in many countries. And, and, and we had to apply for a travel pass to go to, uh, from the immigration in Malaysia to go to, uh, to leave the country during the pandemic lockdown. And we heard reports that many people tried to apply and they were rejected, they were rejected. So we just applied. I just God says, God, if you want me to go, you know, so many risk factor. The COVID case is high, and the airlines is like uh, zero people traveling. Anyway, I was surprised that uh, we were approved and and we got a cheap ticket and a reasonable price and and God opened the door and we went to states for my son's graduation. If not for my son's graduation, I definitely would not go. But anyway, it was so good. We had a one month of. Uh, ministry and holiday and, and traveling all across America and a few sorry the whole of Malaysians are all locked down staying in the house so anyway that's what they call the favor of God being manifested in our life all right now I want to share with you this morning the favor of God being exemplified by a man in the Bible called Joseph so the main characteristics about Joseph's life and what he went through and and how God's favor see him through and promote him from prison to palace. It's a very amazing story, a very touching story, all right? Now, there are five places that uh, Joseph experienced. It's all start with P. The first P is in Papa's house. Let's read Genesis 37. Let's read from verse, uh, uh, my wife will read from verse 3 to 4 and 9 to 11. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Genesis 37 to Genesis 50 is basically about the life of Joseph. There are tremendous lessons and truth that we can learn. First of all, in Papa's house in Genesis 37, the Bible says that Jacob loved uh, Joseph more. Jacob had 10 children, 10 sons. But he chose Joseph and made him a multicolored coat, signifies he's my favorite child. I have, you know, I like him more than the rest. Not that he didn't like the rest, but he liked him slightly more, all right? Now, it's the same with God. It's a sovereign thing when God chooses you and put favor upon your life. It's not fair. It's not because Joseph is more clever. It's not because he's more handsome. I don't know. I've never seen the real faces of Joseph and his brothers. But favor is not flat. Favor cannot be explained. Favor is color blind, race blind, uh, qualification blind. And, and it's just amazing how it's being played out. All right. So, the first telltale sign of God's favor upon your life is when people begin to envy you, people begin to dislike you. 
for no rhyme and reason, they just don't like you. They just envy you because of God's favor upon your life. On the lighter side, I was remember traveling from uh, Manila to from Kuala Lumpur to Manila uh, with Malaysian Airlines. And you know, Malaysian Airlines serve only two choices, fish or chicken. So I, I was sitting quite way back, minding my own business, and the flight stewardess began to serve the meal. And before she could ask me, I said, chicken, please. She looked at me and said, sorry, we ran out of chicken, only fish left. Now, I basically love fish, but Malaysian Airlines only offer dory fish. So I, I just look at her, I said, look, I'm not going to have the fish. Uh, it's dory fish, right? He said, she said, yes. I said, just give me, give me uh, some uh, tomato juice and just a couple of peanuts. And, and she did. I was happy. I, I didn't complain. I didn't scold her. I didn't punch her. So I was just doing my own work. <laughs> and uh, so they served the meal and everything was over. The meal was over. Suddenly, I saw this gentleman from business class. He's a gentleman. He came to me. He says, Mr. Ang, we are sorry that we ran out of chicken. Could we offer you lamb shank from the business class? Wow. <laughs> you know, when, when, when this flight steward brought the lamb shank to an economy class, and you know, everybody was looking, who is he bringing to? And he came to my seat. We all look, who is this man? Well, it's a disciple of Jesus, whom Jesus loved a little bit more. Okay, anyway. In Papa's house, there was no rhyme and reason why Joseph was given the multicolor. Obviously, the father was showing him favor. Actually, what the father is showing favor is a reflection of God the Father. Was God Almighty showing him favor through the father, through people, through friends, through, through colleagues, and, and through your bosses? So it's amazing. So, number one, Remember that favor is not fair, favor is sovereign, favor is colorblind, but it will be played out in, in your life. All right, because of the jealousy and the hatred the brothers against Joseph, now Joseph moved to the second P of his life. He was thrown in the pit. He was thrown in the pit. All right, and uh, Joseph was thrown in the pit for no reason because the brothers your own blood brothers just hated you just couldn't stand and, and envy you see envy is something that is something that's very cruel and very wicked and people will yes. do anything when when they envy you all right so joseph instead of uh, uh thrown in a uh, pit and die reuben decided to suggest let's sell him in the slave market so the third p that we find was Joseph was sold in the slave market, ended in Potiphar's house. Let's read Genesis 39. Let's see what happened in Mr. Potiphar's house, his boss, his new employer. And understand in those days, slavery uh, means that if you are sold as a slave, you lose your birthright, you lose your rights, you lose everything. And the owner who owns you as a slave can kill you, abuse you, use you, throw it away. And, and no question asked because it's like a commodity, it's like a product. When you buy a slave, it's like you buy a rice cooker. You can use it, you can knock it, you can throw it away, you can do whatever you want. So let's read Genesis 39. What happened to Joseph? Verse 1 to 6. Now Joseph had been taken to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph. And he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. He, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now, don't you think that's a very unusual description of a slave? who is uneducated, a Hebrew child in Egypt. 
It's like you buy a Bangladeshi worker in Malaysia, put him in your house. Would you? Would you let him run your house, your finance and everything? Of course not. Gila ka? <laughs> you know, in Malaysia. But look, the favor upon Joseph, Potipar could discern and see God's favor, God's wisdom. He could see that God was with Joseph and he is so wise to put everything in Joseph's hand because Joseph was very capable. So it's, it's very interesting how favor began to play in Joseph's life. Do you know, you know when God's Favor is upon your life. Wherever you go, you're going to prosper. No matter how people mistreat you, how people put you down, you will always rise to the top. It's like a football, you know. You put the football in the middle of the ocean, you got to push it down, push it down to the bottom, and hopefully the people who hate you say, never see you again. But all of a sudden, the next few seconds, you rise up to the top. You rise up to the top not because you are clever, you are smart, because God has put His favor inside you. And no matter how people and the devil puts you down, you will always rise to the top. Amen? I remember, uh, you know, uh, my life, even before I was a Christian, how favor is played out. And of course, I didn't realize I wasn't a Christian then. When I was in school, I find favor with my, my teachers. They like me and... Uh, I also have favor with my headmaster. It was the it was the main school for Form Six in Klang. The whole Klang town got no Form Six uh, school except us. So other schools they have to come to do Form Six. So I had such favor. It was a big school, a famous school, and I could walk into my uh, headmaster's office anytime, discuss anything or ask anything. So even in school days, of course, in my home, I'm the youngest of ten. I had lots of favor from my parents. They liked me and, and they used to brag about me. I was the only one who made it to university. I don't think so because I was cleverer or smarter than all my brothers and sisters. I think it's just the grace and the favor of God upon my life. And I used to eavesdrop my parents telling my neighbors and other people, oh, I have this smart son, you know, he goes to university, he does very well in school and extra. But I think it's just the grace and the favor of God. I remember when I graduated in University of Malaya in 1984. It was a bad time. The economy situation is very bad. Fresh graduate just gets about 800 ringgit to 1,000 maximum. 800 to 1,000 ringgit in 1984. I was working in this college called Janila College. It's something like an a A-level college of preparing students for Australia and, uh, and UK. So I was there lecturing economics. But the person who set up this college is, is an Indian man. He, he didn't pay our pay on time. He wasn't doing well. And, 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 and anyway, so after one year, he never paid our EPF and he, 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 he paid late. So I decided I think it's time to move to another place. And one of my colleagues who also working in Janila College, so he got a job in Mara Institute of Technology, Mara. So he called me up and said, Paul, they are looking for an economics lecturer. So I went, now remember, I'm a fresh graduate, 1985-86. I was 24 years old, so young. I look young now, I'm 60. And imagine I'm 24. I look like a schoolboy when I put on a t-shirt and the shorts. Anyway, I walk, I walk into the interview, and this lady from Mara Institute of Technology, I was waiting that I was hoping she would never ask what qualification, what experience I don't have. I don't even have a diploma in teaching. Can you imagine? I'm just a fresh graduate from University of Malaya, economics, full stop. And what was so amazing about the interview is this. She didn't ask anything. She said, when can you start work? Just like that. And I was paid uh, more than three times, almost four times my former pay. So you roughly know how much I'm getting. This is called the favor of God. No fresh graduate will get that kind of pay. And no fresh graduate will get into ITM for that kind of post and that kind of salary. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it's, you could see the favor of God begin to play out in our lives. And, and just very amazing in your workplace. I pray this morning as you hear this word, 
May you find favor with your boss. May you find favor in the church. May you find favor in everywhere you go. All right, let me share about my son. My son has been in the States for the last six years. And um, he had double degree. He did his first degree four years in three years. And, and he did very well. He had straight A's. He, he was in a dean list and a presidential list. Then he got a scholarship to do law. So, and, and in America, uh, when you do law, you must do internship during your first, second, third year with a law firm so that upon graduation, they will employ you. So he did this because he's a foreigner. He has to compete with the local Americans. And, and he was, he, he managed, he applied for so many law firms and everyone was rejected. He was so discouraged. Finally, one law firm, by the grace of God, just took him in. But this guy is a Jewish American, a Jewish boss, stingy and difficult boss. So anyway, he endured all these years. And upon graduation, uh, you know, he paid him peanuts. So upon graduation, he got his degree. He still never changed the salary. It's like, like employing a Bangladeshi guy and you're happily using the migrant workers and pay cheap labor, you know, and get all the job done. And, and my son did, did his work very hard, uh, accomplished a lot in the workplace and, and solved a lot of difficult problems for him, extra, extra. So every time he began to complain, he said, Dad, I believe I'm more valuable than than the pay that he gives me. I believe I'm underpaid. I said, look, this is a season to humble yourself. This is a season, you know, unless you get a job. Anyhow, one day he came back. He was so down, he was so discouraged. He called us up. He said, mom and dad, I'm going to quit my job. Today, I didn't make any mistake. My boss scolded me, shouted at me in the, in the, in the office and everybody looked at me. And, and it was not my mistake. He was so discouraged, he was so down. I'm going to quit. I'm going to resign. I said, hold on, hold on, Asher. Wait till you get another job. So I said, why, why don't you apply to other law, law company or law firms? No big deal. Say that this is not how it works in America. In America, when you do law, you have to do internship with this company. And when they like you during the internship while you're a student, they will employ you upon graduation. No law firm will employ a fresh graduate. Isn't that exciting? Any of you who have children or you are a fresh graduate, it's, it's terrible right, to look for a job. And you know, it's pandemic time, the economy is down, things are hard to come by. So anyhow, I said, well, there's a God, there's a favor of God. Then I began to tell him about Joseph's story. You know, Joseph was nobody in a foreign land, no qualification. He didn't even have a, a degree to start with. But God Bless him, promote him. Just like in Potiphar's house, was in charge of everything. So I said, well, just relax, trust God. So he, went, he had to pass his bar exam. Now, bar exam, if you know in Malaysia, it's also very difficult. It's a CLP exam. It's a very tough exam. So he has to pass his bar exam to be certified a lawyer and to practice in America. So he went, did his bar exam, and, and uh, on his way back, he met with a friend who is, uh, he hasn't seen for three years. He met this friend in his first university where he went in Dallas. So he just caught up for a lunch. And now this friend of his is working in a lawyer's company, a lawyer's firm. So his friend just took him to see the two bosses, two Christian spirit-filled bosses. It was a very informal meeting and it ended up with a very informal interview. And uh, the boss says, you're a fresh graduate, got no experience, it's very hard to employ you. And his friend, his name is James, James says, look, my son, he, his name is Ash, Ash is a very bright student, he, he will pick up very fast, you know, no, no issue, he, he will flow and he'll pick up very fast. Anyhow, a week later, he received a job offer from this big law company, a Christian law company. When I saw the email of the job offer and the perks and the salary, I almost fell off the chair. <laughs> I had goosebumps. It was, it was just so amazing. It was like day and night, the job that he was working right now with this stingy Jewish boss and the atmosphere and the work ethics compared with this new job, this new offer. It was like day and night. I just spoke to him this morning uh, before uh, you know, early uh, this morning, and and he told me that you know it's so exciting. My boss treat me so well, and and 
and he's going to do his masters, uh, you know, in LLM. It's a very expensive course, like seventy thousand US dollars, and the boss is willing to pay half for his study. Can you imagine? And there's still a lot of perks. Okay, I don't, want, I don't want to make you envy and hate me, but, but what I'm saying is. When God's favor is upon your life, your boss will know it, your boss will see it, and you have so much blessing and favor. Amen. Get ready. All right. So, Potipa's house. And then he met Mrs. Potipa, the wife of Potipa. And you know, she longed for this young, handsome looking man called Joseph. You know the rest of the story. And, and this is actually a story of a woman trying to rape a man. And when she couldn't get what she wanted, she turned around and said, Joseph tried to rape her. Now, it's very interesting that Joseph did the right thing. He fled. He flee. Flee from temptation. Don't tell me Joseph was not interested. I'm sure he was, but he fled. He couldn't sin against God. He couldn't sin against the boss. He fled. And Mrs. Potipa grabbed hold of her garment that he, he was... Uh, wear it and he fled you see the play of the garment the father gave him a multicolored coat the brothers took it away killed an animal and tell the father that that joseph was killed by an animal and put the blood on the multi coat and now joseph is in potipa's house again the coat was taken the garment was taken wait this is not the end of the story see how favor has a way to work it out. I said just now that when you put a football in the middle of the ocean, you will always rise to the top. You see, you rise to the top not because who you are, but what is inside you. All right? Uh, let me just tell you a story. Many years ago in America, there was this man. He sells balloon. He sells all kinds of colored balloon in, in, a, in a square, in a city square. And this young boy was watching him, a black color boy was watching him selling balloons. So when there was no customer, this boy went up to him. He says, sir, if I buy the white color balloon and I let go, will the balloon go up? He said, yes. If I buy a brown color balloon and I let go the balloon, will the balloon go up? The man said, yes, of course. He said, one last question. He said, if I buy a black color balloon and I let go, will it go up? Suddenly, this balloon vendor knew what this boy was asking. He said to him, son, it is not the color of the balloon that makes you go up. It is what is inside the balloon. All right. I know in Malaysia, we have this discrimination and whatever. But I, 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 let me say this. It's not the color of your skin. If God wants you to go up, you will go up. All right, no man, no devil, no politicians, no government can stop you. That's what my belief is. And look at Joseph. He, he was nobody, but he had the favor of God. So you know the second part. Okay, the first P, Papa House, Potipa House. The Papa House, Pete, Potipa House. And now he landed in prison for something he did not commit. A, a crime that he did not commit. He was falsely accused. Now, this is a very difficult part in Joseph's life where he has to walk the valley of humility, a season of humility, not because of his wrongdoing, but God allowed it for a purpose because he's about to be connected to the cup bearer that will take him to his next phase. Sometimes God allow you to go to certain places and a season of humility so that we, we search out hearts so that we also know that God is in control and God is a mighty God and, and, and He is there to be with us all the time regardless of what we go through even though the negative situation comes along he, His presence is still with us His favor never leave us His favor is for life Psalms 30 verse 15 says His favor is for life so God's favor will, will follow you all the days of your life and now in prison I, I can imagine the nights that he couldn't fall asleep, the night he couldn't sleep, think how wicked the brothers wanted to kill him soul in the slave market. How wicked this lady, Mrs. Potipar, I served so well, I didn't do anything wrong, now I'm falsely accused. It was a valley of tears, a humility. But look, I believe God allowed it because the season of uh, humility get him ready for a season of great 
exaltation. The lower you go, the higher you go up. Well, Jesus humbled himself, took in the form of man, and he humbled himself even to the point of death. And the Bible says in Philippians 2 that God exalted him above all names. Wow. So humility is is. It's wonderful, you know. Uh, either we choose to humble ourselves or, or the Bible says in James 4, 6, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. And 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you. Now, James 4, 6 says, God resists the proud. If God resists you, who can assist you? It's a terrible thing if God resists you. But He said He give grace. He give favor for those who walk in humility. And there's a promise of God. As we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, He will exalt us. That's a promise. I saw that play out in my life. There was a, a season of time for five years, I pastored a church in Kuala Lumpur. It was a big church. I, I, was, I was an itinerary speaker and was based in this church. It was a fast-growing church. It's called Tabernacle of Glory, as some of you may know. And the Lord spoke to me to take up the pastoral role as a senior pastor. I, I didn't want it. But God spoke so clearly, I couldn't run away. I cried when, um, when I had to. So anyway, I took up this pastoral uh, ministry for five years. Mind you, the church has six uh, months of, of, uh, of uh, rental, not paid, 28,000 ringgit. This is in the year 1996. And uh, three million debt, not paid. And, you know, uh, people leaving the church and all kinds of accusation. And I was also falsely accused. And, and it was five years of tears and humility and, and all kinds of things were said about me. Anyhow, I obeyed because God spoke to me, full stop. I wasn't looking for position. I was doing well in my traveling ministry. Anyway, it was a valley of tears, a time of humility. And there was a time during the five years that God blessed us with a miracle baby, Asher, who is now a lawyer. And uh, after the five years, when the season was over, God opened doors. God began to connect me with big churches of 30,000, 20,000, and 10,000. And I had a privilege to speak with Chuck Pierce and Cindy Jacob. And, and God began to open up great things. I began to write books and our books and CD sales like hot cake. And God began to exalt and promote me in a very, very special way. See, sometimes like Joseph, we need to go through a season of humiliation. Either the circumstance humble us or we choose to humble ourselves. And sometimes you are falsely accused and betrayed. Just never mind. God is a judge. Vengeance belongs to God. All right? So now he is in prison. God connect him to the cupbearer. Never look down on any person in your life. You don't know whom God will use to take you to the next place, to take you to the next palace. So very unexpectedly, he was connected to the baker and the cupbearer. And you know the rest of the story, the fifth P. Within one day, he was promoted from prison to palace. Wow. Prison to palace in one day. What was Joseph's qualification? A criminal in jail for raping, trying to rape Mrs. Potipar. Isn't that a wonderful record to have? <laughs> Anyhow, without rhyme and reason, when Pharaoh saw Joseph, he knew the wisdom of God. He knew God was with him. Even though he was non-believer of Jehovah, it's amazing how non-Christian can discern these things in your life. You know, I was in, in Penang uh, quite some time ago, and there is this uh, tsunami story. I don't know whether you know, in tsunami 2004, I remember so clearly tsunami that hit Malaysia, hit Penang. And there was a newspaper, Star newspaper in 2004, December. There was this uh, Indian baby in the mattress in Batu Ferengi when, when the when the tsunami hits, the whole place was wiped out and this little baby girl was in a mattress, was wiped out and went into the sea. And amazingly, miraculously, this little girl came back in the same mattress to the same spot where it left. What are the chances? We are talking about tsunami. I'm talking about, I'm talking about wave. I don't know whether you know what is tsunami. I mean, what are the chances a tsunami wave takes a baby in a mattress 
out into the deep ocean and after some time bring back the same baby and the same mattress to the exact spot where it was taken away. Now you know there is a hand of God, you know there's an angel. So when I read that newspaper, that report, I just had this desire. I said, Lord, one day I want to meet the father, I want to meet the girl. And I'm sure God that you have a prophecy for her. Now that was 2004. Sometime this year, I went to Penang and I had a spiritual son. He's a pastor. He took me. I was supposed to go to Botanical Garden and last minute, he said, no, no, let's go to Batuferengi. I just want to enjoy some beach. I like nature. I like beach. So we were walking along Batuferengi. If you don't know, Batuferengi is a long stretch, many miles, many, many miles. And we stumbled into this place and this man says, uh, would you like to have a drink? They, they have a cafe. Would you like to have a drink? It's called Miami Cafe. Check it out. Miami Cafe in Butterfringe. It says, I didn't even know this. It's called Miami. It's just cafe. He said, would you like to have a drink? I said, no, we basically go for a walk. Anyhow, then he started to take out this brochure of, of, of this, this laminated posting of a, of a newspaper cutting. He says, you know, my daughter is a tsunami baby, you know. And, and he began to say to a total stranger, little did he know that I prayed in 2004, that was 17 years ago, a simple prayer. I said, Lord, I want to meet the father and the daughter. Then I got excited. I said, wow, I stumbled into this and we ended up having a drink and I ended up prophesying to the girl and she's 17 right now. I said, you're going to be a star and a few other things. You know what's so amazing? This father who is a Hindu doesn't know anything. He speaks very little English and my pastor's son, spiritual son, is a Tamil-speaking pastor. He began to tell him in Tamil, he says, what's amazing is when my son was, when my wife was pregnant with the daughter, she saw a star from heaven came into her womb. And then this man who never met me first time, he said, who is this holy man? I know he's a holy man. I know he's sent by God. And when I was speaking and prophesying to her daughter and to him, he was like shaking, you know, under the power of God. Wow. Now, I was, I was thoroughly blessed. What are the chances I meet them? What are the chances that, you know, I had a word for them and they were non-Christian? And by the way, the daughter Tulasi has attended my spiritual son's church before. Isn't that amazing? All right. So what I'm trying is to say is God has an amazing way to connect you with people and situation and just like Ruth was at the right place at the right time at the right field the field that belongs to Boaz there was the favor of God shown towards her and you know the rest of the story Ruth became a history maker and married Boaz so sometimes God allow you to go to situation and places and lead you and guide you so that you are connected to uh, the right people I have many stories to tell but I will not take much of your time so now in the prison, Joseph found favor with the man in charge in prison. Isn't that interesting? He led him in charge of everything. Have you seen a prisoner in charge of the whole jail? Well, Joseph was. And he began to get connected to the bearer. And then the next P, the last P, the bearer took him to the palace. Now let's read Genesis 41, verse 42 to 44. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a golden gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried out before him, bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Can you imagine a young man from Bangladesh serving his jail term? And the next thing we know, he's a, a minister of finance in Malaysia, minister of immigration, is in charge of everything. Can you believe that? It's hard to believe, right? As I said, favor is unexplainable. But watch what I want to zero in is the garment. Now, it's interesting that Pharaoh gave him the best linen besides the ring and the gold chain. Honor, promotion, and favor. You see, what 
the brothers took away the multi-coat color. What Mrs. Potiphar took away the garment. Now God restore what Joseph lost. This is a prophetic word for you. You may have lost some things. The devil have taken away your friends, your enemies, your family members, your business associates. Oh, I have taken something out of your life. There was a loss. But I got good news for you. This is a prophetic word. God will restore what you lost in a much greater way than what you lost. Just like the devil took away whatever Job had, his health, his wealth, and all the ten children. But God restored double fold. May the Lord restore you double fold of all that you have lost. Amen? And the concluding story of this Joseph life is so touching. Where now all the eleven brothers met up with Joseph. Wow. Sorry, the ten brothers. The last was Benjamin, which is his own brother. They, they, didn't, they, were part, they were not part of the plot that brought Joseph down. So now these 10 brothers face Joseph face to face. And now Joseph is a big man. He's the second in charge in Egypt. And with his small one word, all of them will be dead. With his one word, they cannot trade. They cannot buy grain. The same hand that they, they tie up and sold in the slave market is the same hand that's going to feed the 10 brothers right now. Isn't it amazing how the story switch and turn? How, how you were the victim and now you are in charge. Well, that's a prophetic word for you. You may be a victim of circumstance, you may be a victim of people, but I say when God puts a favor upon you, the things can switch around. The same hand that they were tied, now it's the same hand that decides to feed you or you die. Wow. But this is a beautiful part of Joseph, which is the type of Jesus. He forgave his brother. And in Genesis 50, verse 20, when the father Jacob died, the ten brothers said, Tolong, tolong, please, 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 spare us, spare us. You know what Joseph said? You brothers meant for evil. Now, all that they did was evil and wicked. There was nothing less than that. You brothers meant for evil. But God meant it for good. Joseph could see that everything that happened in life was not accident. Nothing just happened. He knew that God permit, God allow it for a greater purpose. He knew that the fear of God saw him through in every difficult situation. And now he didn't seek vengeance because I know Joseph believed that vengeance belongs to God. Don't seek vengeance. Let God be the judge. Vengeance belongs to the God and how God can turn things around in a very amazing way. All right. Let, let me just share a closing story and I give you three keys how to tap into God's favor. Number one, walk in humility. Number two, walk in forgiveness. Number three, ask. Ask God for favor. I asked God for favor for the last 41 years and I still ask. I ask for my family, I ask for my son, I ask for my spiritual children, I ask for those who are connected with me. And number four, begin to declare the fear of God upon your life. All right, let me tell you a last story as I close. Many years ago, I was involved in this, what they call the ICFM. It's a, it's a conference for faith ministers, international conference for faith ministers. I was one of the speakers uh, for this particular conference in Australia. And in those days, the conference, they have two sets of speakers, the, the minor speaker, and the major speaker. The major speaker will, will speak at night and there's three nights. And the daytime, three days, will be the minor speakers. And usually they have two sessions in the daytime and one main session at night, open to all, bigger crowd, and all the big name, the big speaker get to speak. So that particular conference, I was supposed to speak one session in the morning. For some reason, my name was out and the person who organized me, maybe he doesn't like me and I was not in. When I found the news I was not in, that I was supposed to be in speaking, I was very disappointed, I was very discouraged, I was very down. Because I was really looking forward to go to Australia for this conference as a speaker. Expenses paid, hotel paid, you know, all kinds of things. So what can you do? Well, praise God, move on, forgive, move on. What was so amazing is, just a few days before the conference, I got the news, I got the news that one of the main speakers for the night session could not make it. 
I believe it's the favor of God. So guess what? They put me. So now I went for the conference. Not only I have a morning session, I have a morning plus night session. What a promotion. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned it for good. So now I had a promotion. I have a morning session and evening session. I still remember that, that meeting that night. I gave an author call. There were a lot of pastors from Philippines. There were 30 old pastors from Philippines. They came for author call. I began to prophesy over one by one. And after that, the doors to Philippines were open and many doors were open as a result of that conference. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? God is so good. You know, the fear of God is so real. I pray as I close that God's favor will continue to follow you all the days of your life. Before I close, just I had a few prophetic words. You see, God has many ways to speak to us. And one of the ways that God speaks to us is through scriptures. And, and I experienced this so many times. And I, I just felt this morning, God quickened to me the scripture that's found in Psalms 46 verse 10. I don't know who is it meant for, but I believe there's somebody here who are watching me right now. This word is for you. Psalms 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. One translation says, Cease striving and know that He is God. In other words, God, God is in control. God is in charge, just like He was in charge in Joseph's life. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to strive. You just need to just trust God and God will work out things for you. And, and the second thing God is saying is, some of you are like Martha. You're worried. You're going serving. You're worried about so many things. But God wants you to be a Mary that will sit at the feet of Jesus and just trust God, just learn of Him. And this is a season where, where, where God's calling us to be a Mary, just to seek God, just to trust Him. And, and all will be well. You know, my son was very concerned about so many things. And I always tell him, you trust God. God will work out things for you. You know, the last six years has been very challenging. He has gone through many trials. I will I'll spare you a lot of tears, a lot of valleys. He has gone through so much. And God saw him through one by one. And I just told him this morning, son, don't worry about the future. God saw you through the last six years. God will see you through the next 16 years, the next 60 years. Same with you right now. The Lord is saying, no point worrying, no point being fearful. He take care of the birds in the air. He can provide for you. He will take care of you. You are the apple of His eye. You have God's favor upon your life. Things may not go out well right now, but it's going to change. It's going to switch. The same Ruth who was a widow, no food to eat, so poor. Now in chapter 4, he married Boaz. The story changed, switched. And not only he married Boaz, um, a wealthy man, and out of the union with Boaz came Jesus the Savior. She is not a Jew. How did he get into the bloodline of Jesus' genealogy where David, the son of David, and Jesus was born? Wow, she became a history maker. You never know what the favor of God will do upon your life. You can switch your story and turn it around. You're nobody today and He'll raise you up to be somebody. All right, because of you, your, your boss uh, will prosper. Your job you're doing will prosper. Your work will prosper. And if, if, if you don't like that job, just pray for God's favor and open door to bless you with a better job. We will ask Dr. Lauren to lead us to sing the closing song and after that, I will make the announcement.
If you've been encouraged by the message, please share it with some of your friends. Regular and constant prayer keep our faith fresh and our anointing strong. When we are constantly praying and fasting, we will see people safe. People got healed or delivered from demons. Conflicts resolve and relationships strengthen. The hand of God will work actively and there will always be a lot of wonderful spiritual developments. So keep on praying, keep on fasting. If you have a misunderstanding with anyone in the church, it's a Christian duty to see that person and to talk to him or her with the hope of reconciliation. We should also try to get parties in conflict to be reconciled. Jesus said that blessed are the peacemakers for they will be sons of God. If you struggle with addiction to pornography, please tell me. I bought an accountability software where I can help to monitor you. You can make me your accountability partner. This can help you to overcome it. I am in the midst of attending a course to help people who struggle with addiction to porn. And if you want to go through the course with me in the near future, please let me know.
Now I will say the closing prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. We will deny ourselves, take up the cross and follow Jesus. We will not despair in the midst of hardships and challenges. For we know that you prepare us for a better life when Jesus Christ returns. Even though our body is wasting away, our inner man is being renewed and prepared to receive your eternal glory. Lord, we praise you for your wisdom, love and protection. Even though we don't have full understanding of your ways, we will always trust in you. We believe that your gracious hand will lead us on. We believe that you will bless and protect us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.